All right, this is the baseball show. I'm Andy Singleton. That's Ralph Lifshitz. Uh, hopefully, we're going to bring a little energy. The beard is gone, so mm-hmm. the mojo is wavering. Ra- uh, we're yes. going to get to three hitters. We're going to get to three hitters today. Uh, high profile names. I uh, don't know if I would say high profile games for all three, but let's just dive right into it with one of the most uh, intriguing shortstop prospects coming along in a while, and that's Trevor Story. And the reason I say that is because if you are a, a prospect hound, you definitely knew who this guy was. If you are a casual fantasy baseball player or a redraft guy, you probably hadn't really heard much of him. And then all of a sudden when he hit 7,000 home runs in spring training and kept that going through the first month of the season, you were blown away and thought this was the greatest shortstop ever to come along. I'm here to tell you, and I think Ralph will back me up on this, he was sold a bill of goods in 2016. Not to say Trevor Story is not a good player. He's just not a great player. And uh, I'm not afraid to say it. Um, there is some things, there are some things, I should say, that are going in his favor. Uh, the stolen base total was way down from what he had put up uh, previously in his career. So I would expect a rise, probably double in 2017, what he stole Last year, I would get him over the 20, uh, 20 stolen base mark. Uh, I think he does have 30 home run power, although I think it's safer to say it's going to be more on the 25 range. Um, he still strikes out a ton. Uh, I, it's, it's, I don't know. It's just he's a very hard player for me to fully endorse, especially when he's going as a third-round pick. Uh, I just don't see that kind of value, but – that being said, after him, the drop off at shortstop is like a hundred picks. Mm. He goes for, he's currently the sixth shortstop off the board, and then the seventh is like a hundred picks later. And he really kind of is in that, you know, he's kind of like, uh, you know, the asterisk for the top five, and that kind of fits with him being six. But Ralph, please, uh, I, I know you kind of feel similar to what I feel the story, but what, what are you down on? Thank yeah, and I think the the thing that's funny with Story is in some circles he's certainly overhyped, and I look at his draft position and I'm like, yeah, it's a lot of hype. And then I think about it, and I think about the fact that you know amongst shortstops he has as much upside as anybody because as you said, we haven't seen the speed. And the thing about you know his, his strikeout or his contact issues that are going in his favor is that he has those issues and he plays in cores, you know, for half of his games. So that's a huge bonus. You know, the fact that, you know, he hits the ball so hard. Um, that's one of the things that's also in his favor. If you look at his hard hit hit rate among hitters on uh, the majors last year, they had uh, 400 plus plate appearances. The only guy that had harder contact rate than him was David Ortiz with uh, 45.7%. He was a 44.7%. So he was hitting the ball almost as hard as Ortiz. Any plays in Coors. Ortiz retired, so I mean, is he hitting the ball harder than anybody in baseball now? Potentially. Uh, he has that speed. The big issue is the, the strikeouts. If he can bring those strikeouts down to let's say 27, you know, even 28% from that 31, that's going to make a big difference. He's going to get the Bay Bip help because of Coors Field. He's not going to hit 300. You know, there's certainly a chance that he doesn't hit as many homers. He hits 20. Um, could be injured. Um, he does have some injury history. The thumb thing kind of worries me a little bit. You know, hands, hitters, all that sort of stuff. It seems like Coors hitters are always a little bit more susceptible to injury. So that's the downside. The upside is, you know, he could have a 40-20 season possibly at the shortstop position. Now, that's high ceiling, right. but there's a chance. I mean, he's got the power. He's got the environment. We've seen him hit 27 in 91 games or 97 games. You know, there's a 40-homer pace. So, Yes. I'm interested to see what story is. He's a huge risk reward guy, though, because you're going to have to pay up for him at draft time. Yeah, and see, the, and the thing is, like, if people want to point and say, well, once the league figured him out, his numbers dropped a little, he fell off that pace, and that's all fine and well. But then I think it was July, he put up another eight homer, 27 RBI exactly. month. So uh, who's to say he didn't figure out the league figuring him out, and then we're kind of in some inception mode kind of <laughs> sequence here. But uh, I do like him as a player. It's just the value that is being attached to him now. Mm. I would much rather go two picks higher and go for a guy like Lindor, who I feel much safer with, 
than a guy like Story. Uh, because okay. the, moral, the moral of the story is you lose seasons when you lose on high picks. And a third round mm. pick is a high pick. And if he is the bad story, um, which is very, very, very possible. And when I say yeah, bad story, story pun in. Well, well yes. <laughs> um, but the bad version would be, you know, 265 hitter with a boatload of strikeouts, you know, 20 homers. Yeah. You know, that's not third round value. So uh, buyer beware with Trevor Story, uh, although he is a nice player. Does that cover it? I think you're I think you're spot on, man. I got nothing else to add. All right, good. Well, we're gonna move to Mike Mustakas. I'm gonna let you talk as much as you want about him because I really have not much to say about it. Uh, he had a wasted 2016 season. People still want to chase the allure, uh, or at least seem to want to chase the allure. Maybe that's exaggerating a little bit. He's going as the 19th third baseman uh, off the board right now, which is probably where he should be. Personally, I'm done playing this game. I have zero interest in Mike Moustakis as a fantasy player. Uh, I'm much more interested in his understudy, uh, Chesler Cuthbert. Uh, really? Uh, I think he actually offers what Moustakis has done, and nobody wants him. So, yeah, absolutely, sure, why not? He's he's gonna give me the same thing that Mustakis does. Only Oof. everybody thinks Mustakis because he was what number two pick overall or something like that. That we're still waiting for something. I, I, like I Maybe. said, I'm I'm done with Mustakis. If you got something to say about him, by all means, talk about it. Okay. Well, I'm chasing the dragon still. I am not done with Mike Mustakis. Apparently, the Greek god of hype. Um, but I think last season, though it was wasted, if you remember, in that first month. He was raking. He had seven homers. It was his age 27 season. I think you were starting to see the top of the breakout. There was actually some stuff written about it, particularly over on uh, Rotographs, I believe, this week, where they were measuring, you know, exit velocity jumps with power jumps. He was one of the guys that popped up. Um, it was four or five miles per hour that added on the exit velocity year over year. Um, you know, every year that he's been in the major leagues, his strikeout rate has gone down. His swing strike rate has gone down. Um, you know, he's a low strike strikeout guy, great approach. He's good hit tool, you know, reg- prior to, you know, regardless of what you think, he's still a guy that has had 20 home run seasons in the majors with a good average. Um, this could be the point in time where maybe he puts it all together. The reason I like Moustakas is he's somebody you're going to be able to take a last round flyer on even in a deep league, or maybe you're in a 16 team league. I play in a lot of those sort of leagues. He's a perfect utility guy, bench bat, somebody to filter in, you know, potentially you buy a low are able to sell high on him. If some of these gains that he made in uh, 2016 hold over to 2017, barring he's fully recovered from that torn ACL that took away his season. Did yeah, I say, yeah? talk- no, are we still, are we talking about the same Mike Moustakis? I mean, I thought I heard you mention, you know, uh, good average. And I don't associate Mike Moustakis with ever having a good average other than 2015, which was the one blip on the radar where he actually delivered on some of the expectations people have had for him. You mentioned, you know, he started out last year in his age 27 season. Raking, he did. He put up seven homers in 27 games. But yeah. on, those, on those seven homers, he also only had 13 RBIs which is kind of, you know, alarming to me. Uh, And his average also dropped back down to 240, where he's basically been as a career hitter in the 240 range. He he had had a 214 bay bit, though. It was was absurdly unlucky. And that, okay, I'll give you some credit with that. But, uh, you know, like I said, it just seemed to be a regression back to the Mike Moustakis we all became used to in the past. And maybe that 2015 season was going to be, you know, the highlight, the highlighted bar on his baseball card when his career is all said and done. Um, Those those were gains, man. He keeps on getting better. Okay. (laughs) Well, we'll we'll see what happens uh, when this year ends. Um, And you didn't sell me, but maybe you sold somebody else. And that's the whole point. I got one more point, too. It's It's a contract year and he's a Boris client. So, you know, he's going to be motivated. Okay. He's going to make his money this year. He's going to have speaking, his biggest year ever. Speaking of Boris, shout out to Lee Steinberg, uh, who started following us on Twitter uh, this past week. So speaking of super agents, 
just wanted to throw that one in there. Really has no bearing on <laughs> this show or what we're telling you about fantasy players. But uh, yeah, you didn't sell me on Mustakis. Maybe you sold somebody else. And like I said, we don't have to agree on everything. If we Trust did, me. you probably didn't want, wouldn't want to be watching this anyway. <laughs> um, let's talk about a third baseman though. I do happen to love. Uh, I do happen to think is not getting enough credit or enough love. And I'm talking about Michael Franco. Uh, batted mostly in the third spot last year for the Phillies with Tommy Joseph behind him. I only mention that because Tommy Joseph is kind of on a lot of super lists of first bases here as being a high power kind of guy. Kind of similar to Moustakis in some ways with his numbers. But anyway, uh, I hated the batting average dip for Franco in 2016. He was down to 255. Mm. Uh, I don't expect it to rise much past 270, but I think he is 270, 275 major league hitter, so it, it should definitely jump up from where it was last year. Uh, help is on the way is the more important thing. You know, you got J.P. Crawford coming. Uh, Herrera, Odubo Herrera's been showing some, some uh, belief that he's a legit major leaguer. So you, Absolutely. You do, have, you do have some stuff coming to in that lineup to help him. But Roman Quinn. Roman Quinn. Uh, but I don't think 2017 is the year that Phil's make the major leap. Uh, I think there's still another year or two away from that. So uh, all that being said, though, this guy put, is going to put up 25 homers, 90 RBIs, mm -hmm. and he's the 14th third baseman off the board. I mean, on one hand, that shows you how deep the position is. But on the other hand, it shows you this guy is being criminally underrated. Please tell me you like Michael Franco more than you like Mike Moustakis. Well, I like Mike Moustakis, but I actually like Mikel Franco more than I like Mike Moustakis. Um, I think one of the problems with Franco, and especially with fantasy baseball players, you know, based off of last year, is he had that huge spring. You know, he had nine homers in spring training. You know, his ADP jumped significantly up into a range where probably he wasn't that comfortable. Um, and he ended up disappointing a lot of people. But the thing is, even in a disappointing year, which is his first full year in the majors at the age of 23, he had... 25 homers, and he drove in, you know, um, 88 RBIs, which in a Phillies lineup, which was awful. It was probably the worst lineup in the majors, one of the worst made offenses in the majors. I think they actually had the least run scored. That's pretty significant, the fact that he still drove in 88. Um, he's, a, You know, he's a contact guy for a power hitter. doesn't strike out much. His strikeout rates are always going to be relatively low. He's a lot like Adam Jones in that sense, where he makes a lot of contact, and that can also be a deterrent. One of the things that sort of holds Franco back is he's not patient enough, doesn't always wait for his pitch, so he pops out a lot. He had a 15% uh, infield fly ball rate. That's you know one of the big um, indicators I always look at in terms of what kind of contact they're making. So he doesn't always make hard contact. I wish he'd wait for his pitch a little bit more, but he's only 24. You know he's been in the major leagues. He's in a pitcher's park. I mean, excuse me, a hitter's park and he's only get, going to get a better supporting cast around him. I can't imagine the Phillies are going to be as bad as they were last year. So if his offense and the players around him bump up a little bit, you know, he knows how to move players along, um, makes good contact, and he's in a hitter's park that's going to play up his power a little bit, I don't see any reason why he couldn't potentially reach 30 homers and maybe touch 90-something RBIs. I mean, he was almost there last season. Yeah. I, I said, I, I think I said I was disappointed in his ADP. I'm actually outraged. Uh, Michael Franco, Mikel Franco, uh, again, I put your name regardless. This is a guy you should definitely be targeting again in 2017 because apparently nobody else wants to touch him. And uh, the value is just, it's beautiful. So, absolutely. Show this man some love. Thanks for watching the baseball show. We'll see you next time with some prospects. Go back and check our other episodes. Go to the player library, check out any individual player that you may be interested in that we've covered to this point. We'll be updating you weekly. Subscribe to the channel. Ask your questions. Thanks.